Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing cha-ching number 50, uh, but before I start, today is Memorial Day, so I just wanted to thank anyone out there who has served in the military or have had family serve in the military, just to give you a big thank you today. Um, so we're going to get into, I can't believe that I am on cha-ching number 50 already, this is my 50th cha-ching video. I feel like I should be like throwing confetti in the air or something like that. Um, so I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos that I do. So we're going to start with where I left off, which was this, I am not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of this. I am. Who am I kidding? For, for mantra, for Mantro. This was a double salt seller. It was really cool. It was, um, that's Eric texting me. Uh, these two ladies back to back and each one had like a salt seller. Um, it was like a double sided salt seller. It was really cool looking. Anyway, I won this at an auction. I can't remember what, what I paid for the flat that it was on, but I know it wasn't much. And that sold for $129.99. So that was a great, great sale. Uh, next we have a vintage, this I also won at an auction. It was one of those melted plastic popcorn holiday decorations. When I first saw this, I didn't know what it was. I found it looked like a mix between like a witch and a wizard of some sort. Turns out it is a scarecrow. Um, so I won that at an auction and I can't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't much. Anyway, that sold for $29.99. That went to a subscriber and that was just another cha-ching. <laughs> um, so that went to a subscriber and she also purchased this next item, which was a Lane Bryant tank top that sold for $19.99. And that came from the Facebook garbage bag of clothes, as well as this next item, which was another Lane Bryant item. This one was a cardigan. It had a little bit of a ruffle detailing and that one sold for $16.99. So the next item was a lot of three hair care. These were hair gels by a company named Wella. Those sold for $26.99. I think I picked them up at a yard sale, probably at a dollar a piece. Um, next was, I got these at Goodwill. It was a set of two vintage Home Co. Tree of Life wall hangings. These were really cute. Those sold for $29.99 and I probably paid about $1.99 or $2.99 a piece for them. Um, next we have a set of six Williams Sonoma plates. These all had um, butlers on. They were really cute. Uh, they were salad plates, not like full dinner plates. Those sold for $26.99. And those came from a thrift store. I think I paid maybe three or four dollars for the whole set of them. And they did go um, through GSP. So they left the country. Um, next we have a Dragon Ball Z Vegeta figure. Um, this sold for $39.99. It was new in the package still. Uh, the packaging wasn't in the best condition, but... Um, Dragon Ball Z is de definitely has, you know, collectors out there um, that collect Dragon Ball Z items. Eric absolutely loved that show. Oh my goodness. I, when we like, it wasn't when we first started dating, but um, back when we were still teenagers, um, I was constantly buying him the DVD sets. He has every, every single one. I think he's seen every single every single episode. So anyway, got that at a yard sale for $1. So that was a great find. I'm surprised he didn't want to keep that. <laughs> uh, next we have the vintage Penny Nash skateboard. Eric recently won this at an auction and that sold for $39.99. And I apologize, I can't remember the prices of what I won some of this stuff at auction for, especially the stuff that he won. 
so I can't say exactly what we paid for that, but I'm sure it was in an auction haul video at some point. Uh, next thing we have is just a top by a company called Roz and Alley that sold for $8.99. And I think this came from like a free box along the side of the curb. So I didn't pay anything for it. So I didn't get much for it, but you know, I didn't pay anything for it either. Next we have a men's Avon Brisk Spice Aftershave that sold for $15.99. This actually belonged to my father, as did the next item. This one was a pair of his shorts, but these were by Carhartt, and those sold for $18.99. Uh, but speaking of Avon, since I just mentioned Avon in my last sale, um, I am putting up another Bolo 411 video and it's that's my topic for that video is Avon, so you have to keep a lookout for that. Uh, next we have a flamenco dance shawl. This was so incredibly beautiful. I picked this up at a yard sale. It did go to a subscriber and that sold for $32. So that was just so gorgeous. I hope that she loved it. Um, next item also came from the same yard sale and these were a pair of men's Armani jeans driving loafers. These were so nice. Um, those sold for $69.99. Uh, next item was something else that Eric won at auction, so I can't remember what he paid, but he bought, he won, I can't say bought because he had to bid on them, but won four of these Toledo Torch smudge pots. Um, there were two red and two green. I think he sold both reds, so the only ones that left are, are the green ones, um, but the other red one will be in another cha-ching because it didn't show up in this one. Uh, so that sold for $58.99. Next we have a Harley Davidson uh, shirt. This had Yosem yeah, Yosemite, <laughs> Yosemite Sam on it for $18.99. And I got that at a yard sale. I probably paid like a dollar for it. I sold one of those Victoria's Secret fragrance mists that I recently got at a yard sale. I paid $4 for this uh, fragrance mist and it sold for $69.99. So it is definitely a fragrance that's harder to find, um, hence why it sells for so much. So I ended up getting two of that same um, fragrance at the yard sale. So I have one more left of that one. Next we have a Annalie Santa Claus. This I won at an auction and it did go to a subscriber and that sold for $29.99. Next item was one of those pins. If you guys remember, I had uh, purchased this hat at a yard sale and it had all these crazy pins on. Well, I didn't get around to listing all the pins yet, but I did list one of them from there and it was this one. It was of a snake charmer and it was actually called, they're called jigglers when they have um, little pieces on them that kind of like jiggle around. So that was a jiggler brooch and that sold for $12.99. I sold a set of vintage Sears um, sheet sets. These were in the print Bloomin' Patch. They were so pretty. So they were new old stock, brand new, still sealed. Um, I believe it was a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, and a set of pillowcases that were in that lot. Those sold for $69.99, and I got them at a yard sale, and I think I paid about 4 or $5 for that set because I think that was one that was in like a gallon sized baggy type thing. Uh, next we have that other lounge fly mini backpack that I recently uh, purchased at a yard sale. This one was the Disney Parks one that had all of the Disney cats on but as like little chibi characters and I paid $12 for that backpack and it sold for $89.99. So that was a great sale. 
Uh, next thing was a pair of Sorel sandals. These were in the style called Torpeda. Those sold for $69.99. They were pretty much brand new in the box and I got those at a yard sale. I feel like I maybe paid $10 for those um, since they were new in the box. It could have been five, five or 10, but regardless, it was still a great sale. Next, we have a Franklin Mint Stick Pin. This was called the Lover's Rose. That sold for $25.99. And um, Eric and I, we picked this up at a yard sale. I think we paid $4 for it. I sold a lot of two vintage from 1972. These were little uh, Santa Clauses. They had rubber faces. They were by a company called Kmar or Kamar. And those sold for $19.99. I feel like I got those for like $2 maybe. I sold a Kathy Van Zeeland purse. This was kind of awesome because Kathy Van Zeeland um, just isn't as popular as it used to be years ago. That sold for $18.99. And I know I got that at a yard sale, but I had it like in my closet for a long time as well. Um, and that did also go through GSP, so that also left the country. I sold a Simply Emma top. It had these like mirrored sequins around the top. That sold for $13.99. It did go to a subscriber and that came from a Philibang rummage sale. I sold a 1989 Howden Group teapot. This was like a ba like it looked like a basket weave. It was really, really pretty. I won that at an auction. It sold for $29.99. And I think I did pay $10 for that teapot. I sold a milk glass perfume atomizer for $29.99. This originally did come from a yard sale, but I kind of was collecting perfume atomizers for a while. I still have a bunch. There's some I will never get rid of that will always be a part of my collection. But I was like, I was cleaning my room the other day and I just, you know, I have kind of an abundance of some. So I have been trying to just list up some of the ones that I'm not really, you know, wanting anymore. Here we go. Next item was a vintage, these were by a company called Frankel. They were vintage plastic Christmas ornaments and they were like a set of three bears. Those sold for $12.99 and I got those from that barn sale that I went to last year and I currently have like a lot of vintage Christmas ornaments that came from that sale. Like I just lotted them up all together um, I had them listed at $19.99 with a starting bid and no one bid on them. So I, I relisted them, but if they don't get bids this time around, I may part, part it out just in case there's like just one someone wants and they don't want all of them. Um, but I just, I wanted to just lock them up to try and get them out a little faster, but didn't really work out that way. We have an Evolve Beauty Mascara set. This was brand new, still sealed. Um, that sold for $9.99 and I got that at a yard sale for a dollar. I have a Fitz and Floyd. This was a playing card box. It could hold two decks of cards. Uh, very, very pretty. That sold for $19.99. That went to a subscriber and she also purchased the next item which was a little plastic um, trinket kind of box that was made in Italy that sold for $12.99 and both of those items I think came from the same flat that I won at an auction. Unless we have a vintage 1983 Pucci uh, card game that sold for $19.99. And then this next item was also a two vintage Christmas ornaments that came from that barn sale. Uh, these ones were by a company called Bradford Novelty and they were made, they're made of like a plastic material, but I think everything that was made by this Bradford Novelty group 
like they had some sort of slogan called the unbreakable kind so like you know their ornaments wouldn't break type of thing probably because they were made of plastic I don't know anyway those sold for $13.99 which again is why I think maybe I should just part out that lot if no one bids on it and the last thing that I have for this cha-ching is a secret Cocoa Butter Kiss body spray that sold for $19.99 and that also did go to a subscriber. So that is everything for this cha-ching. Um, and then typically, you know, at the end of the videos, I discuss anything that's been happening lately um, eBay related. So really the only thing um, lately that's been happening is I've been noticing an uptick in non-paying bidders, which is really the only downfall to um, listing stuff as auctions. Because when you list something as a buy it now, the buyer has to pay for it immediately. So there's no waiting around for someone to pay. Whereas with an auction, after the auction ends, um, the buyer doesn't have to pay right away, which, you know, typically is fine because, you know, not everyone gets paid the same day an auction ends if they're like waiting for a paycheck or something along those lines. So I understand, uh, but I feel like the non-paying bidders just aren't paying at all. So it's like the auction ends, I wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for a payment, it doesn't come. The unpaid item case has to open and I have to wait and wait and wait and wait again until I can relist it. And then I have to wait and wait and wait and wait again until it sells and the whole cycle all over again. So it's definitely a huge waste of time, but you know, there's really nothing you can do about it when it comes to non-paying bidders. Um, I mean, they will get strikes against their account and once you have so many, you will get booted off eBay, but regardless, it's still, it's still a pain and I'm sure anyone who is a reseller completely understands all of that nonsense. Um, so I, I feel like I've been having an uptick of non-paying bidders recently. Um, and then the only other thing that has happened to me recently, and I don't think this was a problem with other people, something happened on my end and I'm still kind of uncertain how it happened, um, but, and I don't know if I mentioned this in my last cha-ching or not, I feel like I didn't, but if I did, I, I totally apologize, but um, I was having people message me asking why their item was going to take so long to get to them, like um, based on estimated arrival times that, you know, eBay shows when you purchase something. And I didn't understand what they meant by that because, you know, there shouldn't be any kind of wait or anything like that. Um, so I just assumed like there was a glitch somewhere, maybe on their end, like, you know, reassuring them, like there's no way it's gonna take that long to get to you kind of thing. I'm not sure why it says such a far off time frame. So I went on and I don't know how long this had been going on. Like it could have been going on for a while and I feel like it might have been affecting my sales actually. Um, but you know, when you click on an item and it'll say estimated arrival time based on, you know, when you purchase the item. And for whatever reason, mine all had this long date from like, I feel like it was June 22nd. Like all my, my listings said, estimated arrival time June 22nd and that's like almost a month away from you know when I was first realizing this was an issue so I did get in contact with eBay for business on Facebook because I thought I was gonna have to get them to help me try and figure out what the problem was well I ended up figuring out what the problem was myself so I went in to bulk edit all of my auctions and I went to um, my shipping and handling times and I changed it. I bumped it down to, I think I had it at three days and I bumped it to one day and it fixed everything. So feasibly I can still ship within one day and typically that's what I was doing anyway because I never switched um, after I quit my job since I can go to the post office every day now. Um, but 
regardless, um, it, it kind of worked itself out. So I don't know if, I think mine are at two day now. I think I did just bump it down um, to the two day just in case, you know, anything would ever come up and I wouldn't be able to go to the post office within one day. And everything seems perfectly fine now. So I don't know if something just glitched on my end and, you know, did something a little funky, but I'm glad that it was brought to my attention and I, and I was able to fix it. Um, but like I said, I don't know if that was affecting my sales at all. I feel like it was because just that um, earlier though the night before I had gotten a sale and then the buyer wanted to cancel right away and I feel like maybe that was why they wanted to cancel because it was showing that they weren't going to get their item for like a really long time so um, I apologize if you guys were looking at any of my stuff and were seeing that and was like Michelle what are you doing kind of thing uh, but it was definitely a glitch so I'm thankful that that got all straightened out um, because I was really concerned about it um, but that's pretty much everything for this Cha Chang guys had to let me know how things have been going for you and how your sales have been so I hope you guys enjoyed this one you have to let me know what you thought down in the comments and I will see you next time